Hey folks, I have been trusted with some antique chisels to restore, and they don't look like much right now, but they are very good steel, very much worthwhile restoring. So, let's get started, uh, first taking them apart, and this will need some persuasion. Oh, this one came right out. This one too. Now let's get rid of all this rust. Evaporust really should sponsor us. Now for the handle, we went through a few design options and we came up with something that we think is going to be comfortable and it's going to fit nicely in the hand and it can be used in different positions. And I'm going to make it out of this magnificent walnut that the person who gave me these chisels, uh, they cut this from a tree about, what, 15, 20 years ago? So it has sentimental value. And it's a beautiful piece of wood. Now to efficiently make all these nine handles that I need and for them to look alike, I'm going to use a tool I recently made for the lathe. It's a duplicator. And I have to make a pattern for it, which is what I'm doing here with a piece of poplar. Let's cut some walnut. This was a really inconvenient time to find out that I am actually sensitive to walnut. So even with proper respirator and protection and all that, I had to take extra precautions to make sure I didn't get the stuff on me. But after a lot of work and a lot of cleanup, I got it done. Now I'm gonna make some ferrules from some copper. The ferrule is a little metal collar that goes on the handle and uh, in this case I'm making it out of copper because I felt it looked better copper and I had the copper lying around. Its job is to prevent the handle from splitting, especially when uh, the blade gets set in place, because the tang, it, even though there's a, there's a hole there, it goes in much like a nail and it applies forces that would try to split the handle. So this keeps everything together. Now to fit them is really simple. We push it down and then we apply a little bit of persuasion with a rubber mallet. Now a bit of sanding to make the copper surface pretty. 
we decided to give it a lacquer finish on these handles, which is what is really used on pretty much every tool handle out there. And uh, since the weather would not cooperate, I had to improvise a painting booth and had to do it indoors. But I totally don't recommend it. This stuff is nasty. And I had good ventilation. Meanwhile, let's see how these are doing. The chisels are looking great after a night in the rust remover, and I can actually tell what they are now. We have some Buck Bros, some uh, DR Barton, SJ80s. This is good old steel. I'm gonna give it a little buff with this magic eraser thing. This thing has a really fine abrasive to it, and uh, it gives the wood a more natural look. It takes away the high shine of the lacquer and doesn't make it look like it's been dipped in plastic. I don't know if the camera can capture it, but uh, this one has been buffed and it looks a lot more dull, a lot more natural. And this one is very high gloss. I prefer it like this. These are now ready to be fully assembled, so... This one is split. Damn it. Good thing I had an extra reserve one in case something like this happened. Now let's fix this one that's split. Now it's not so much fix as it is replacing the handle. The only problem is this thing was designed not to come off. Let's try it again. Yay, success! These here, the owner of the chisels, he wants to sharpen them himself. Uh, we woodworker types are very particular about how our tools are sharpened, so that's totally understandable. Now these, he's letting me keep for myself. So let's go sharpen them. This one has a lot of pitting in the tip, so I have to bring it really far back on the grinder. Now just one last thing, I gotta wax them. On modesty aside, I think this turned out great. So thank you so much for coming along in this journey. And uh, don't forget all the usual YouTube stuff, subscribe and uh, thumbs up and leave a comment if you want. And I look forward to using these. So thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.